Well, two of President Trump's top financial officials are warning of permanent damage to the U.S. economy unless states began to lift their shutdown restrictions. Members of the Senate Banking Committee questioned Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell on the effectiveness of the government's coronavirus relief initiatives. Lawmakers press them on how and when to reopen and whether or not bills such as the Paycheck Protection Program are helping everyday Americans. We expect economic conditions to improve in the third and fourth quarter and into next year. The scope and speed of this downturn are without modern precedent, significantly worse than any recession since World War II. More than 20 million people have lost their jobs and recent Fed research shows that uh, what others have also found that people earning less are the ones being hardest hit. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin, you said there's considerable risk of not reopening, that keeping some businesses closed could cause permanent economic damage. How many workers will die if we send people back to work without the protections they need, Mr. Secretary? Mr. Senator, we don't intend to send anybody back to work without the protections. And I would say I was prepared to come there today. I thought it was safe to testify. Matter of fact, I already was at the Senate this morning wearing a mask. And I assure you, uh, both myself and everybody on the task force, the vice president and others are following the best medical advice. And uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of the medical advice that we're getting and the way the economy is opening up in a safe way. The longer that we continue a shutdown, when weeks turn into months, doesn't that necessarily increase the risk that some businesses will fail, some jobs won't be there to go back to if uh, a lockdown and a shutdown continues indefinitely. That's absolutely the case, Mr. Senator. There is the risk of permanent damage. And as I've said before, we're conscious of the health issues and we want to do this in a balanced and safe way. CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes is on Capitol Hill. And I also want to bring in CBSN political contributor Molly Hooper, who also joins us from Washington. Nancy, I want to start with you. Did Mnuchin or Powell signal whether or not they're going to they're open to more spending by Congress? And were there specific states that they chose to focus on? Well, uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, was put on the spot about this a lot more than Secretary Mnuchin was, I think, because Democrats know that there is some daylight between Powell and the president and Senate Republicans on this issue. And so he was asked by multiple Senate Democrats whether he does indeed believe that Congress should pass another major stimulus bill, another big spending bill to prop up individuals and businesses and state and local governments. And Powell had to be pretty careful here, partly because uh, it's not really the Fed's role, as he said, to wade into policy. He tries to kind of uh, float above it. And also because uh, he's aware that that could create friction with the administration, the president in particular. However, he did say over and over again, Rena, that he does worry about the long-term impact on the economy if too many small businesses, large businesses, are allowed to fail. He talked over and over again about how difficult it can be for people to re-enter the workforce if they're unemployed for long periods of time. They lose their contacts, their networks. It gets difficult for them to break back in. He even pointed out at one point that uh, something like 13 percent of the workforce is in state and local government. Uh, hint, hint, state and local governments may need more money as well to keep those people mm. in their jobs. Uh, so he certainly appeared to be leaning on the side of more stimulus, but uh, Republicans heard his words and, and said, hey, look, the best way to keep people from staying unemployed for long periods of time is to allow their businesses to open back up more quickly. That's the way to get people back to work. That's the way to keep small businesses from uh, running out of cash and folding. Yeah. You know, the focus also, Molly, so much of this on the Paycheck Protection Program, Democrats really pushed, uh, pushed press both Mnuchin and Powell on this topic. Did either of them express confidence in the effectiveness of, of those programs in particular? And also, what's the overall takeaway about protecting families and these small businesses? 
Well, I think that there, to unpack that, that that's, it seems like a, a simple question, but this is a long hearing with a lot of answers. And I think that, uh, you know, what they did say, a lot of senators were really pressing on this issue of the fact that the Federal Reserve has a huge tranche of money, almost $450 billion that they have available to lend to banks to, that will back those PPP loans and everything. Um, but that money really hasn't gotten into the hands of banks, lending institutions, and the municipalities, local governments um, that could be benefiting from that money haven't been able to qualify because some of them are too small. And that's actually what we heard from the more rural state senators like Mike Rounds, the Republican of um, South Dakota, who, uh, South Dakota, yeah, who, who, who was pressing, saying, listen, a lot of our cities can't even qualify for some of these facilities, as they're called, because they are too small and have to go through the state governments. And really, the issue has been, it's been very difficult to, to get all these programs up and running in such a short period of time. And because of this, if you do qualify for the PPP, there are, there are directives that say you have to spend that money by a certain date. And so Sen the Senate and, Repo and members of the House want to increase those timelines so that so that these small businesses can still benefit from that because really we aren't back to work yet fully. Mm -hmm. You know, Nancy, just uh, over the weekend, Chairman Powell appeared on 60 Minutes and Scott Pelley pressed him on the issue of the economy and a vaccine. Here's what he told Scott. Can there be a recovery without a reasonably effective vaccine? Assuming there's not a second wave of, uh, of, uh, of the coronavirus, I think you'll see the economy recover steadily through the second half of this year. So for the economy to fully recover, people will have to be fully confident, and that, that may have to await the arrival of, of, of a vaccine. Nancy, I'm curious, did Powell, did Powell again today, along with Mnuchin, express the importance of finding a vaccine for the economy to fully recover? You know, the issue of a vaccine didn't really come up in this hearing, and that's partly because uh, that's not where most of these senators' minds were at. They're members of the banking committee. They wanted to know about, uh, you know, how these programs are working, whether the money's getting out the door, whether it's getting to the right people, whether they need to, whether Congress needs to allocate more money. So the question of a vaccine didn't really come into it. If you talk to most senators, uh, they are very skeptical that a vaccine vaccine will be ready in time for the fall. They realize that it's kind of a moonshot even to have a vaccine by the winter. So most of them appear to be proceeding as if they uh, believe that that's not really on the near term horizon. And their questions uh, didn't at all suggest that that there would be some kind of white knight vaccine riding in to save the day anytime soon. Mm. Mm. Uh, Molly, I want to ask you about Republicans on Capitol Hill. Are they expressing confidence about spending more money or expanding any of the programs that are already in place? Well, I think one telling um, back and forth during this hearing was between Senator John Kenney, Republican Louisiana, um, an oft-quoted, <laughs> re-quoted uh, senator. He has very colorful quotes, again, from Louisiana. He said he thinks that there's less than a 50 percent chance that another bill will actually pass the Congress that deals specifically with, you know, coronavirus stimulus funding. Um, and, and so that sort of gives you an indication as to where uh, this could be going. I mean, Senator Kennedy is a big proponent and supporter of President Trump, and he represents, uh, he represents quite a bit of quite a bit of the ideology of the Senate Republicans. And so I think that if you listen to what he's saying, I'm not quite sure. But today, President Trump is heading to Capitol Hill. In fact, he might be there now, um, meeting with the Republican conference to figure out how do they move forward? Because there are senators in some of these states that are more rural and whatnot, and, and they aren't seeing the funding they need, and they need more stimulus to get their own respective economies going. It's just a matter of how you do that. Nancy, Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren pressed Mnuchin on whether or not he'll require businesses to actually spend government money on payroll. I want to play for you that exchange. Are you going to require companies that receive money from this half a trillion dollar slush fund to have to keep people on payroll? It's a simple question. Yes or no? Are you going to require that? First, let me say that our number one objective is keeping people employed. Good. So are you I, want to, I want to be very clear on that. 
people who are getting taxpayer money? That's my question. Again, we negotiated very significant restrictions on employee compensation, on dividends, on buybacks. And in the Main Street facility, we have put in a provision that we expect people to use their best efforts to support jobs. Nancy, so what do the laws actually say? The laws that Senator Warren is referring to there, does it require companies to spend money on payroll? It does not. So what uh, what Warren was talking about there was this $500 billion fund for midsize and large companies, loans that go to those companies to help keep them afloat. This is not the same as the PPP program, which are loans that are structured to convert to grants if companies, small businesses, do certain things with the money, including paying their workers. But when it comes to these large business loans that don't convert into grants, there were some strings attached. You couldn't use the money, for example, to pad executive pay. You couldn't use the money for stock buybacks. But it doesn't really say anything about uh, not being able to lay off workers. That's not something that, that was something that was discussed by Democrats and Republicans when they were crafting this bill, but it, it's not part of the bill. And what Warren is saying there is that Mnuchin has the power, has the ability to, uh, to attach those strings if he wants to, to require that big companies don't take the money and then lay off workers, or to say you can't lay off a bunch of workers and then come and apply for the money and take it. Um, you saw Mnuchin there basically saying he wants to keep his options open, and the reality is that because these are loans, they are not grants, there is a limit, uh, many Republicans believe in particular, to what kinds of a criteria you can attach to that money. These businesses are getting low interest rates, but they do have to pay the money back. And uh, Mnuchin doesn't want to tie their hands and say, you know, you've got to use this money uh, in a certain way, even if it causes you to go under. He wants businesses to have the flexibility to use the, the money in the, in the way that they see fit.